This time, I decided to switch gears. Instead of browsing through the usual SOTD winners, I explored side of the month winners, hoping to uncover something fresh and inspiring to recreate. That's when I stumbled upon this website. You might remember it, we previously covered the Instagram story slider from here, but that was just scratching the surface. This site had a lot more going on, especially on the work page. What caught my eye was this stunning full screen infinite carousel that animates as you scroll. The way it's built is simply brilliant, from the clip path and scale animations on the images, to the parallax effect on the center images and even the slick text animations. I decided to take on the challenge of recreating this slider from scratch using vanilla javascript and the basics of gsap. This one's a bit advanced as there is a lot happening here so the video might be a little longer. But stick with me and I'll walk you through creating this infinite scrolling content slider step by step using html, css, javascript and gsap. If you find my work helpful, be sure to drop a like on the video and if you are new here, consider subscribing as it really helps out. And for those who'd like to access the source code for this project and hundreds of other cool builds, check out the Pro Membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. We'll start by adding a navbar and a footer to replicate the look of the original website. The navbar will be divided into two parts, the logo and the navigation items. For now, I'll use a simple paragraph elements as placeholders instead of actual links. The footer will include a paragraph for text and a container for the slider counter. Inside this counter, I'll add a div with the class count to display the default active slide number. I'll also include a separator and the total count both as paragraph elements. Next, we'll move on to the slider. For now, I'll define the structure of one slide which will be visible when the page loads. The additional slides will be created dynamically as the user scrolls matching the structure we defined here using JavaScript. Each slide will include a background image wrapped inside a div so we can apply clip path and scale animation separately. Outside the slider, we'll need a fixed image container positioned at the center of the viewport. This image will be also wrapped in another div so we can later apply clip path and transform animations to the wrapper and the image independently. Finally, there is the slider copy which will contain the title and the description. The title will be an h1 element and the description will be a paragraph element. You can set any content you like for the first slide. And that's it, our HTML structure is ready. Let's move on to CSS. First, I'll set a global reset by removing default margins and padding and using box sizing border box for consistent element sizing. The HTML and body will be set to take up the full width and height of the viewport and I'll use a custom font for a clean modern look. For images, I'll set them to cover their containers with object fit cover ensuring the scale properly. Adding will change transform will help optimize animations for smoother performance. Next, the navbar will be fixed at the top spanning the full width. I'll add a padding and align the logo and navigation items using flexbox. The navigation text will be styled with a lighter font weight and white color to stand out against the background. The footer will have a similar structure fixed at the bottom of the screen with the slider counter displayed using flexbox. Each counter number and separator will have a consistent size and opacity to maintain a minimal clean design. For the active counter number, I'll use active with the clip path for future animations. This allows us to mask and animate the number dynamically, creating smooth transitions for the slight counter. The height of this clip path almost matches the font size of the counter text, ensuring that the clipping effect aligns perfectly with the text dimensions. Now onto the slider. The slider container will take up the full viewport with overflow hidden to keep everything neatly inside the bounds. Each slide will be positioned absolutely to stack them on top of each other. 
The background image will be also positioned absolutely and wrapped in a div so we can control its clip path and animations independently. I'll also add a subtle dark overlay using after suit element to create a consistent look. The main image will be centrally aligned in the viewport. To achieve this, I'll use position absolute and transform it with translate minus 50%. We will also have a wrapper with the clip path for additional animations. For the text content, the title and description both will have a clipping applied with clip path for animations and be positioned to the left of the center viewport for a modern asymmetric layout. For the text content, the title and description will have clipping applied using clip path. The height of the clip path here again matches the font size of the text, ensuring the mask perfectly covers the text during the animation. To create the sliding effect for the text animation, we'll use translate Y. By setting the translate Y value equal to the clip path height, I can position the text elements just outside the visible area of the mask, either above or below, depending on the animation direction. This prepares them to smoothly slide into view during transitions. The title will use an H1 with bold, larger font styling, while the description will use a lighter paragraph style. To ensure responsiveness, I'll add media queries. On smaller screens, the main image will scale up to fill more of the screen and the text will shift to maintain visual balance. That's it for the CSS. We have set up a clean, responsive design and prepared everything for animations. Now let's move on to JavaScript and start bringing the carousel to life. Before we dive into the JavaScript, I want to share a quick tip to better understand the clip path animations. I personally use this clip path generator tool. It's incredibly helpful for visualizing the values you are working with. I highly recommend checking it out. If you are looking to get a better grasp of clip path properties I'll be using in this project, just to effectively understand how these values affect the animation and the transition states. Now let's get started with the JavaScript. First, I'll wait for the DOM to fully load using DOM content loaded event. I start by defining a few variables. The total slides variable holds the total number of slides and current slide keeps track of the active slide. The animation flag variable prevents multiple animations from overlapping while scroll allowed and last scroll time manage the scrolling behavior and ensure smooth transitions. I'll also define arrays for the slide titles and descriptions which will be dynamically updated for each slide to keep the code flexible and organized. Next, I define the create slide function which dynamically generates a new slide whenever required. First, I create a div element and assign it the class name slide which will act as the main container for the slide. Inside this container, I'll add another div with the class slide background image. This div will hold the background image for the slide. I then create an image element and set its source dynamically based on the slide number passed to the function. This ensures each slide displays the correct image. Once the image is ready, I append it to the slide background image container and then append that container to the main slide. Now to handle the animation, I set an initial clip path value on the background image wrapper. If the user is scrolling down, the clip path starts at the bottom of the image. If scrolling up, it starts at the top. This creates a smooth ripple effect during the transition. Finally, I return the completed slide element so it can be added to the slider dynamically when needed. Next, I define the create main image wrapper function which is responsible for generating the central image container for the slide. I start by creating a div element and assigning it the class name slide main image wrapper. Then I create an image element and dynamically set its source based on the slide number passed to the function. Again, this ensures the correct image is displayed for each slide. Next, I append the image element to the wrapper, linking the image to its container. 
To handle the animation, I set an initial clip path value for the wrapper based on the scroll direction. In this case, if the user is scrolling down, the clip path starts at the top of the image and if scrolling up, it starts at the bottom. This helps create a seamless reveal effect for the central image during the transition. Now I define the create text elements function which is responsible for generating the title, description and slide counter for each slide. First, I create an h1 element for the title and set its content dynamically using the slide titles array. The text corresponds to the current slide number, ensuring that each slide displays the correct title. Next, I use gsep to set the initial position of the title. Based on the scroll direction, the title starts either slightly below or above its final position. The y value here is set to match the height of the parent wrapper on which we have applied the clip path. This ensures that the new text elements start completely outside the clip mask, either above or below it, depending on the scroll direction. This setup prepares the text for a smooth sliding animation as it transitions into view. Then I create a paragraph element for the description. Similar to the title, I set its text content dynamically using the slide descriptions array. This ensures that each slide has a matching description. I'll use gsep again to set the description's initial position, offset slightly up or down depending on the scroll direction. Finally, I create another paragraph element for the slide counter which displays the current slide number. Using gsep again, I set its initial position to ensure it animates smoothly into view. Once all three elements, the title, description and counter are created and styled, I return them together as an object so they can be added to the DOM dynamically. Now let's move on to the animate slide function which handles the transition between slides. First, I add a condition to ensure the function doesn't run if an animation is already in progress or if scrolling is temporarily disabled. This helps avoid overlapping animations or glitches. Next, I set the animating flag to true and temporarily disable scrolling by setting scroll allowed flag to false. These flags ensure the user can't trigger another animation while the current one is still running. I then select the key DOM elements, the slider container, the current slide, the main image container and its current wrapper. Additionally, I grab the containers for the title, description and counter along with their active elements so we can animate them. To determine the next slide, I check the scroll direction. If the direction is down and the user is currently on the last slide, we loop back to the first slide. If the direction is up and the user is on the first slide, we loop to the last slide. Otherwise, the slide number increments or decrements based on the direction. With the new slide determined, I dynamically create its background, central image wrapper and the text elements by calling the helper functions we defined earlier. These new elements are then appended to their respective containers in the DOM. Before starting the animation, I set an initial position for the new main image using gsep. The image is offset vertically, either above or below the viewport based on the scroll direction. This positioning ensures a seamless transition as the new image slides into place. Now let's define the timeline for animating the slide transition using gsep. I start by creating a gsep timeline. I also define an on-complete callback which will run after the animation finishes. Inside this callback, I remove the old elements, the current slide, main image wrapper, title, description and counter from the DOM to keep everything clean and efficient. Once the cleanup is complete, I reset the animation flag to false so that another animation can start and I enable scrolling again after a short delay. This ensures smooth interaction without triggering multiple transitions too quickly. Next, I define the animation sequence. The first animation applies to the background image of the new slide. It transitions the clip path property to reveal the image fully. The direction of the animation, either top to bottom or bottom to top, is determined by the scroll direction. At the same time, I scale up the background image of the current slide to create a dynamic zoom effect adding depth to the transition. For the central image wrapper, I animate its clip path to reveal it fully, again depending on the scroll direction. Then, the image inside the current main wrapper slides out of view, moving up or down depending on the scroll direction. 
Simultaneously, the new main image slides into view, creating a seamless flow between slides. For the text elements, the title, description, and counter of the current slide animate out of the view in the opposite direction of the scroll. At the same time, the new title, description, and counter slide into place, ensuring all elements are perfectly synchronized. The entire sequence is carefully timed, with all animations starting at the same time for a cohesive effect. Once the timeline completes, the incomplete callback ensures the setup is ready for the next transition. Now let's implement the scroll and touch functionality to make our carousel interactive. First, I define a handle scroll function that determines how the carousel responds to the scroll event. Inside this function, I add a few conditions. If an animation is already running or scrolling is temporarily disabled, the function returns right away. To prevent rapid consecutive animations, I also check the time since the last scroll event using last scroll time. If it's been less than a second, the function exits. Otherwise, I update last scroll time and call the animate slide function with the current scroll direction. Next, I attach a will event listener to the window object. This listener detects mouse wheel scrolls and determines the scroll direction based on the delta y value. A positive value means the user is scrolling down, while a negative value indicates an upward scroll. I prevent the default scroll behavior and pass the direction to the handle scroll function. To handle touch events, I introduce a variable called touch start y to store the initial vertical position of the user's touch. I also use a flag called is touch active to ensure that touch interactions are properly tracked. The touch start event listener records the starting position of the touch and sets the flag to true. The touch move event listener calculates the difference between the starting and the current touch positions. If this difference is significant enough, it determines the scroll direction down if the user swipes up and up if they swipe down. After that, it calls the handle scroll function and disables further touch tracking by setting the flag to false. Finally, the touch end event listener resets the flag to ensure the carousel is ready for the next interaction. By combining these scroll and touch event listeners, we make the carousel responsive to both desktop and mobile users, ensuring a smooth and intuitive experience across devices. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.